Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdillahu falamudhillala wa man yudhlil falahadiyala wa nashadu an la ilaha illallah wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul amma ba'd فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أيضا إن عدة الشهور عند الله إثنى عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض ومنها أربعة حرم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الكيس من دان نفسه أملا لما بعد الموت أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters All praise, thanks, gratification, gratitude it is only for Allah. And every day we should say Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us from, um, from amongst the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That he has blessed us with deen al-Islam which is deen al-Haq. He has blessed us with that beautiful gift of al-Iman which no amount of money can purchase. These are favors which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us and at no time should we be ungrateful for these favors. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to take it away from us, then no one can give it back to us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yahdi man yasha wa yadhillu man yasha. He guide onto the straight path whosoever he wishes. It is only the desire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guide whomsoever He wishes. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish to misguide, none can guide. None can guide him onto the straight path. So my dear respective brothers and sisters, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these two gifts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Ittaqullah, fear Allah. Haqqa tuqatihi as he ought to be feared. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And do not die. Do not die accepting that you're submitting. Except that you're obeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shown to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a time period. A period of time that we will be able to fulfill this command. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, in another part of the Quran, He says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَةً فَعُلْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Remind because reminder proves beneficial for the believers. So what I'm doing here, it is just a reminder, first of all for myself and for all of us as Muslims. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, He continues in the other ayat, He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتَ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created mankind and jinn except that they worship me. Worship here does not only restrict us to salah and zakah and hajj. But worship means that a person, he lives his entire life in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether he's a merchant, whether he's a tradesman, whether he's a teacher, whatever aspect of life he may fall into, which part of the community he may fall into, whether he's an imam, whether he's a muqtadi, whether he's a child, whether he's an adult, we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is exempted. Whether we're an alim or not, all of us, we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 24 hours of our daily life must be in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, that I have not created mankind and jinn except that they worship me. That they be in my total obedience. Anyone who doesn't fall within this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for him. 
An-Nar, the fire of Jahannam. But to fulfill this, my dear respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a time. And the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a time is so that we may understand and we may reflect and understand that we have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. So time, it is that which we use to measure. Time is that which we use to calculate. And everything is involved, it, is, it revolves, it is surrounded by time. Illallah, except Allah. But everything else, it is restricted by time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Al-Quran, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَ عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ That certainly in the book of Allah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Lawh al-Mahfuz in the sacred tablet has been written 12 months. 12 months. Why do we need 12 months? We could have gone from day to day and just saying yes, another day, another day. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us that here is the time, here is time for you so that you may be able to calculate, you may be able to check and measure. Measure what? Our wealth? How much profit I gained this year? How much I didn't gain this year? No, my dear respective brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a time that we may measure how close are we getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us Am I getting closer to Allah or am I getting further away from Allah? Last year Ramadan to this Ramadan, am I a person who, fa who fears Allah more or am, I, or am I a person who is disobeying Allah more? Last year Hajj, did I perform Hajj last year and I had the means or did I, did I not perform the Hajj? So a person you will use it as a measurement to see how he's getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to measure the time that he has before he returned back to Allah. Before we came onto the face of this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined our time. Each and every one of us, one of the four things that is the angel was commanded to, to decree unto a person was his lifespan. What makes up this lifespan? Months, years, days, weeks, seconds. And a man will not go beyond that except in what Allah does decree and does prescribe for him. So if it is that a man has 60 years, 2 months and 2 days and 10 seconds, then at that time, there will be no holding back except in that the angel of death will come for you. Whatever case it may happen that you have to be in, whether if at that time you have to be in a plane and that plane will crash, whether if at that time you become paralyzed, whether at that time you're driving down the road and your time has reached, Allah will just create a means to take you away from this world. So everyone, our time has been destined already. But the, the sad thing about it is that we do not know when this time is. We do not know how long we have again. We do not know how long we have again. But what we are sure about is that at, within this time which Allah has given to us, we can obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, Inna iddata shuhur inda Allahi ithna ashara shahran Fi kitab allahi yawm khalaqa samawati wal awd And this 12 months it has been decreed from since the time Allah created the heavens and the earth. Everything, it is within that time span. Everything, even the angels, this entire earth, the life of the prophets has been made within this lifespan. The only person who is above that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time doesn't govern Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created signs for us. He has created signs. What are the signs? Unfortunately, we do not even observe the signs. With this time, Allah just didn't say, okay, I have given you a certain time unto the face of this earth live. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us, many of us, we alhamdulillah, we have that opportunity of seeing the signs. And many signs that we see are within ourselves is aging. We become old, we become gray, we become feeble, we become weak. Many of us, when we are young, 
We walk the streets with our chest puffed up in the air. We think, who? No one can touch me. But one day Allah will bring you back to like that of a little child. To like that of a little child. These are examples for us. That that same man who used to walk with his chest puffed up in the air with pride, Allah will bring him back. Come back. Settle yourself. I'm going to take you soon. But unfortunately, we are so busy with the dunya that we do not even observe the signs. We do not even observe the signs. It is like we are heedless drivers. Driving down the highway, but they, t they are telling you there's a detour here and a detour here. But we are only focusing on what is ahead. The dunya. So the small little signs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us, the aches and the pains. What we could have done when we were young, we are not able to do it again. From at one time we didn't have no bear on our faces, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting bear on our faces. And from that it turns grey. These are signs for us, my dear respective brothers. And these are signs to tell us that your time is coming soon. Your time is coming soon. You're close to reaching the grave. But we're so busy with the dunya and the disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't even recognize these signs. And in this, and in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only told us that within this time obey me, but he has told us one important thing, which as this ummah we have forgotten. Ku anfusikum wa ahlikum nara. Because once you live this time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you in the obedience of Allah, then you will be saving yourselves from the fire. But did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ku anfusikum? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just restrict, save yourself from the fire? No, my dear respective brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told, he told us in the Holy Quran, Ku anfusikum wa ahlikum nara. Save yourselves and your family from the fire. Save yourselves and your family from the fire. The 60 years and the 20 years and the 30 years which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Are we saving our families from the fire? Are we saving ourselves from the fire? Unfortunately today, we find more pleasure in backbiting, slandering, gossip than the ibarat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, than the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People will sit for hours and hours and hours gossiping away, chatting away. So much so that the society has become a socializing society. That if it is that we cannot socialize, then we find that someone has taken something away from us. The Facebook and the this and the email and the this and we, we like to socialize, communicate, gossip. But there are some times that we have to pull ourselves away from this busyness and reflect upon the greatness of Allah. Re reflect where our lives are going, where my family life is going. Are they obeying Allah? Am I obeying Allah? These are the questions sometimes we have to take ourselves and ask. Today we find more, more pleasure in the disobedience of Allah than the obedience of Allah. We find more pleasure in disobeying Allah than obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For what reason? I don't know. I cannot give the answer for it. But what I do know is that any person who does disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something in store for him. Because this time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you, it is not your time. It is not your time. Allah has prescribed it to you. He has lent it to you. This is why Allah will question you about it. How did you spend the time that you have on the face of this earth? How did you spend it? Did you spend it in the obedience of Allah or did you spend it in the disobedience of Allah? Ask ourselves. Ask ourselves. Alhamdulillah, we have entered into a new Islamic year. 1432. Last five years. Am I a better Muslim or am I a worse Muslim? Don't look at nobody else. Look at yourselves. Am I getting closer to Allah? Am I performing more ibadah? Is my salah intact? We will find that when we are younger, sometimes we tend to be more obedient to Allah than when we get older. Because when we get older, we think that we know all the excuses. We know all the shortcuts. But in Islam, there is no shortcut. It is either the right way or the wrong way. Very simple. So let us ask ourselves, 
This is a new Islamic year. One of the sacred months of the Islamic year. Al-Muharram. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Afzul al-Siyam ba'du shahrul Ramadan, after the month of Ramadan, the most virtuous of fast after the month of Ramadan. Shahrullah al-Muharram. It is the month of Allah. It is the month of Allah. This is one of the sacred months. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, there are four sacred months. Arba'atun hurum. Four of them are sacred. Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qa'dah, Muharram, Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. These are the four sacred months. For which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting that we do good deeds in these months. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity that Alhamdulillah we have Dhul Qa'dah, following it was Dhul Hijjah, after it was Al Muharram, so that we can do good deeds. But we are always falling back, we are always falling behind. Not making an effort. Let us ask ourselves, where are we really going? Where are we really going? Next 10 years, where would I be? What type of Muslim would I be? What type of Islam my children will have? Let us ask our ourselves these questions. And if we ask ourselves these questions, then we will find less time to involve ourselves in backbiting, slandering, gossip, old talk. And we will find ourselves doing things that is more constructive, which will benefit us, which will benefit our family, and which will benefit our community, inshallah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very beautiful hadith, he says, Al Kayisu, a smart, a prudent individual, Mandana nafsahu amila lima ba'd al maut, is that one who subdues his nafs, he controls his desire. Because as human beings, we feel that we don't want nothing to control us. We don't want nothing to moderate us. We must be free. Yes, you're free with restrictions. You're free with restrictions. Because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ad-dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. That this world is a sijn, a prison. What is the quality of a prison? There is restrictions. So even though you can move about in the prison, there are boundaries, there are walls. There are things that you cannot do. So this dunya, it is a sijn, it is a prison for the believers. Wa jannatul kafir, but the kafirs as for the unbelievers, it is a paradise because they can fulfill their desires. But for everything come the consequences of it. So if you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you subdue your nafs in this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a special prize preserved for you in the akhir, which is al-jannah. But for those who want to fulfill your desires, have the pleasure of this world, go ahead. But when you go before Allah, rest assured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you in account for what you have done. And that is the, the Al-Jahannam which will be waiting for you. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-Kayyis, a prudent, a smart individual, Mandana nafsahu amila lima ba'd al maut, is that he subdues his nafs and he, he controls his desire. And he only works for that which is after death. Because the ending of that time, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, we call it birth and death. Birth and death. And what is the, the qualities of these two things? When it is that a child comes into this world, everyone is happy and smiling. What the child is doing? The child is crying. He's crying. And everyone is happy, a new child has come into this world. And when the, that same child has reached adulthood now and he died, and he dies, what happened? Everyone is crying, but as a mu'min, he should be laughing and happy. Because he has passed the trials and the tribulations of this world. He has passed the trials and the tribulations of this world. This is why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Tuhfatul mu'min al maut That the gift of a mu'min, is death because alhamdulillah he has passed the trials and the tribulations of this world but for those who remain they are crying thinking wow we will miss him but as for those who disobey Allah there are two crimes those who are still alive they cry for his passing and he also cries and mourns because here is where he's going to face the punishment in the grave 
Here is where he's going to face the punishment in the grave. And then the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues to say, Wal ajizu, an ajiz, a stupid person, manittaba'a nafsahu hawahu, is that one who follows his nafs, his desire, wa yatamanna ala Allah, and he puts his trust in Allah. So he says, don't worry, man, Allah gonna forgive me. Where did you get that contract from? Show me. Where did you get that contract that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you disobey me and I will forgive you? I never see it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you commit sins and you sincerely repent, I will forgive you insha'Allah. This is why as a mu'min we should be li living between hope and fear. Hope and fear. Hoping for the rahmah and the mercy of Allah, but fearing the adab and the punishment of Allah. Not just hoping, not just living a life of hope. Because if you're only doing that, thinking that, well, I could live my life how I want, this time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to me, I can live it how I want, then when you go before Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to task. So I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed us in this blessed month of Al-Muhawram. And as the Imam already mentioned, that Alhamdulillah, we have the day of Ashura, which will be on Thursday. The 10th of Muharram, which will be on Thursday, and we can fast the 9th and the 10th, or the 10th and the 11th, and by so doing, inshallah, one year of our sins will be forgiven, because this is what we are looking for. We are looking for opportunity where we can gain the forgiveness of Allah, where we can gain the pleasure of Allah. Not trying to look for opportunity where we can dis displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before we know it, this year will come to an end. This lunar year, this Islamic year will come to an end. And our lives will also come to an end. So before we are caught off guard, let us ensure and make preparation for that life. These years that is coming, it is a sign for us. That let us understand that we are close to our graves. Every year that comes, you are closer to the grave. Every day that comes, you are closer to the grave. Every minute, you are closer to the grave. You are not, get, not getting further and further away. So I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us. And let us make full benefit of the time that we have left on the face of this earth, inshallah. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hola